Hey, it's bouldering season. Let's get you guys ready. Today's show is for anybody that's going on their first bouldering trip. And we chose between Font and Ticino, two completely different areas. Basically, what differs the most about these two climbing locations is the rock. In Fontainebleau, you'll find sandstone and essentially a lot of sand. It's quite like beachy. It's a really cool, magical forest that you get to walk around, lay your crash pad down and just climb whatever beautiful rock formation you have in front of you. The sandstone is also quite forgiving on the skin. You can climb for multiple days in a row. And it's honestly a really good transition if you're coming for, from indoor climbing to outdoor climbing. It's quite family friendly as well. And it's honestly a magical forest to go climb in. So let's talk about Ticino. I'm from there, so I'm a little bit biased, but yeah, the valleys there are stunning. The boulders are so, so cool. We did a couple of like epic TV shoots there. So roll those clips. But essentially you'll be climbing on granite or nyes. So unlike Fontainebleau, that's quite forgiving on the skin. You're gonna be crimping right away. Maybe on a 6A warm up, you're gonna be full crimping. So you need to do a couple of adjustments probably in your warm ups. And essentially climbing in Ticino, the climbing is tough. Before we get into the gear, there are a couple of really important things that you should be looking up, thinking about before heading climbing. First of all is where to park and camp. Not everywhere is allowed in Ticino and in Font. There are designated parking areas and camping can be tricky. So make sure to look it up before you go. Next, guidebooks. If you forget to order a guidebook or you cannot find it in your language, 27 Crags actually works really well in Ticino for all its different areas and also in Fontainebleau. There are a ton of boulders, pictures. I've personally used 27 Crags in both locations and I'm really happy with that. So let's talk about gear. And since you're going bouldering, all you actually need is a Patagonia beanie, lose the t-shirt, bring a fan and you're good to go. Hashtag boulder bros. Ugh, cringe. Right, let's start to talk about crash pads. So I've got the biggest crash pads behind me since we'll talk about Fontainebleau. Walk-ins are quite short, so you can bring nice and heavy, big, thick crash pads. First up, we've got the Okun Dominator. And out of these three, this is the lightest one. It's great for font since it already has a fully integrated carpet. And this in the middle over here is not a seam, it's actually a zip. Because you can unzip it and it changes shape and size and it becomes a really nice and long crash pad for traverses in font. So very versatile crash pad actually. Next up, we've got the Snap Grand Stamina. It's pretty big. It comes in at 7.5 kilos, but my favorite feature about this is this waterproof material they chose to put on the backside. I mean, when you go bouldering, the crash pads do get quite dirty. This is just really nice and easy to clean off. And then you can put it back in your car and not make a mess every time. Plus it comes with this integrated doormat. So you can just place it underneath uh, when you're gonna start a boulder and then it has its pockets so you won't lose it. Cause yeah, they're quite easy to lose. And the nice thing about this crash pad is that there is no crease in the middle and it folds up like a taco. So it's also really handy to stuff your things in. Really big and heavy and sturdy. It comes in at 7.5 kilos, which is still lighter than the Black Diamond Mundo. Cause this crash pad comes in at 9.5 kilos. It's the biggest one that we have on the shop. But in Fontainebleau, it's not going to be a problem since most of the approaches are within like 5 to 15 minutes and they're all quite flat and comfortable. This crash pad comes with some nice padded shoulders and a nice padded waistband. Super handy dandy to have in Font also for high balls and for traverses. It's kind of a do-it-all pad and obviously if you can afford it, the bigger the better. So that's it for the font crash pads. Obviously, if you're going to Ticino and you've got these or you got crash pads, like they will do as well. However, in Ticino, the approaches are a bit more mountainous. The paths are not like highways, like in font. So you have to hike through the forest and carrying a light to medium crash pad might be the way to go. Also, the landings aren't as flat as in font. 
So with a couple of like medium to small crash pads, you can just set up the landing a bit better. First up, we've got the Moon Warrior. And this is a really well loved pad since it is not that expensive and it has a tackle fold design. So again, you don't have that crease in the middle. And here you've got the backpack straps hidden. On the bottom side, there are these two plasticky uh, inserts that actually feel like the baby slippers, so you the crash pad won't slide around and it's also really easy to clean. And the whole crash pad is made out of this really durable canvas and it comes in at six kilos. So again, like a medium sized crash pad for your Ticino adventures. Next up, we've got the Stamina One. And as you can tell, it's uh, pretty small. It's the smallest crash pad we have on the shop actually, but it comes in at 3.5 kilos. So it's really, really light to, to carry around. And also if you've got already a couple of crash pads, this could be a great addition. If you're going climbing in Fontainebleau, really don't forget something that you can clean off your shoes with. This is the snap plaster. And uh, yeah, you can just put it at the start of your boulder, clean your shoes so you won't ruin the rock and all the climbs. This one and there's an Okun one as well. They come in at 45 euros on the Epic TV shop. Next up, let's talk about the warm up. Either you're climbing in Fontainebleau or Ticino, your warm up shouldn't change that much. Just make sure in Fontainebleau that your shoulders are nice and warm because there are a lot of mantles. Even probably your warm up is gonna be a mantle. So make sure to do a couple of push ups. Bring the elastic bands, bring the squeegee donuts to get the blood flowing. But if you're going to Ticino, the climbing is way more crimpy there than in Font. So don't forget a portable hangboard. We've got a couple in the Epic TV shop. Two that I've got here today are the Lattice Mini Bar. This is quite ingenious. Actually, go check out the video tutorial on how to properly use it and all the different features that it has. Or if you prefer to have more of an edge, there's the YNY Penta that you can like switch around. You have different pockets, different depths of edges. And then in the warm up section, I added climbing tape. If you're going on a longer climbing trip, it's a good idea to bring some extra tape because you wanna tape up those digits because especially in granite, the skin does tend to go quite quickly. And especially you don't want to get like splits on your second day because that's the most hateful thing still being like in a good shape but not being able to even touch a rock because it hurts so much don't forget a brush or a couple of brushes in ticino you've got granite boulders so again you want something tough this fuzzo ones are great they're made of boar bristles brush away the stick marks and it's a good idea when you get to a boulder and you actually you know you might want to have a flash attempt on it just brush those holes if you're going to font, maybe just get a softer brush since it's sandstone and it sheds a lot of sand. Right, next up, let's talk about climbing shoes. Font is such a perfect training ground if you're moving from an indoor setting outdoors. First of all, there's just a ton of boulders. And again, I mentioned like roundy shaped boulders. So there's a lot of smearing. The edges are tiny and sure, you might want an edging shoe for a couple of slabs. But in general, the Fontainebleau climbing is really fun when you're like on an overhang with big pockets where you can like heel hook and toe hook. So the softer, the better. In my hand, I've got the Imperial Soup Top. Great font shoe. And in my experience, no edge shoes are also super great in font. Basically anything soft, malleable that you can really smear uh, on is gonna be a good choice in Fontainebleau. These are my well-loved Evolved Zenith. I actually took them to Font a couple of times. I sent my first 7A in these in Font. So yeah, nice memories with the shoes and also ideal for Font since they're so soft and malleable. So that's definitely uh, high on the list of recommendations. We don't have them here, but uh, La Sportiva Squama, La Sportiva Solution Comp are really soft shoes and really well-loved. Also, if you go around Font, everybody has like a Squama or even like a, Fu a Furia Air. So those would be my recommendations for Fontainebleau. Really soft shoes. In Ticino, you're gonna be climbing on some rough, but also maybe smooth granite. At the same time, you're gonna find like tiny crystals that you really have to lay all your power down on them. So you want something a bit tougher, something that you can really push your whole weight 
on the tippy toe of your shoes. So basically any Scarpa Instinct will do. If you already have them, great, bring those. This is the Instinct S. It's slippers and at the front, as you can hear, it's quite tough. It's nice and pointy, great for those small and marginal crystal footholds. A couple of other suggestions that would make great Ticino bouldering shoes are the flagships from Unparallel and then the Evolve Phantoms. These were designed with Daniel Woods, who always climbs in Ticino, so he really developed this with that style of climbing in mind. And then if you're a bit of a heavier climber, I think the Scarpa Boostic is a really good choice because of that full sole. Last but not least, the Scarpa Instinct LE. We still have got a ton of these on our UK shop, so make sure to get them there. That's it, let's move on to skincare. Bouldering trips can be quite brutal, especially on your skin. It's a really good idea to bring some sandpaper. There's actually this black diamond skin kit that comes with a nail clipper, two rolls of tape and a block of sandpaper. And you're wondering maybe why you want to bring sandpaper since you're already using so much your skin. It's for the big calluses to just like sand them down so you avoid like big huge flappers because when that happens that sucks even more than a split. In terms of skincare and skin growth, basically anything that might help you maybe psycholo psychologically to help your skin regrow. Rhino does some amazing product. There's the Rhino Repair that people swear by it. Climb Skin is another brand that people swear by. And personally, I always take around with me some Climb On, a little tube bar that you can just pass around to your friends when you're at the bar and you just oil up your hands and sit there and stare at your hands and wait for the skin to grow. And that's it. We tackled some of the essential gear to bring to Fontainebleau or Ticino. If you're going to any of these bouldering locations, let us know. And also if you've got some other tips and tricks to make the transition from indoor bouldering to outdoor, let us know down in the comments below. You'll also find all the links to the products in the description. Bye bye and thank you so much for watching.